I've known Shane for at least eight years now from coming to Ackle, mostly from surfing, sometimes from uh, drinking. <laughs> but we've had some good times. So it's really nice to, to come together and do something like this. And uh, maybe this could be the opening of some kind of collaborative thing that we can do in the future. Um, I think in the process of, of this exhibition that we have here, it was very interesting for me this morning as well to talk to Shane for some of his older work that's just around the back there where the drinks are. And it kind of shows you a little bit how we came to this point. I mean, um, you notice these photographs here with the, uh, the rocks and then one coloured rock. And then it comes to the, these wet paintings where he was working on board, very wet paints just taking photographs of it because it essentially was running off the board which I found really really interesting. So he started getting uh, a little bit more uh, left of centre over the last while. He didn't just suddenly come out with, with this new idea that he's working on now. Um, it's an obvious connection and the title of, of the exhibition, the biggest word that comes across to me is, is resonance. I've been obsessed with resonance um, so much so that my guitar I use a resonating box and I have a spike that connects it and I really believe in, um, I have a theory of uh, uh, magnetism and music but I'll talk a little bit about that um, and how things resonate and you know how colours resonate as well, it's, it's absolutely it's absolutely critical to how our emotions work I believe. Um, the, the classic quote is the, the, the new era of minimalist composers sort of from the 1980s onward but the classic line was that sometimes one note is, is almost enough. And that idea that in a piece of music, if you play one note on a piano, it, it doesn't have any context until you play the next one. And what, what note you play next is what makes, gives that first note meaning. And it's exactly the same with these, particularly these paintings because you see in the different kinds, some are just different shades of one colour, very close, and, and others have quite a lot of contrast, like maybe the the bright one just behind the blue and the red and this, this one on the other side of the um I've dubbed this the uh, blind date walk. <laughs> but you know none of the colours, I mean the first time he puts something on it means nothing and then it's what he chooses to do after that that has the context and gives it context and how those colours vibrate. You know this thing of vibrant colours, I mean they're vibrating. They vibrate against each other, depending on the contrast and how, how close or far away they are. Just like in music, just to have like an out-of-tune guitar <laughs> uh, is vibrating all wrong, you know? And then, of course, what we think of as being a good vibration, that's a surfing term now, <laughs> get to the Beach Boys, but what we consider to be a good vibration has changed so much over the years. I mean, in medieval times, if you played uh, certain intervals on the, on the instruments, it was actually, you know, it was, they called it El Diablo music because it was so ugly to them. And now, on a modern piece of music, everybody would use that distance of two notes all the time. And just like in painting, things are getting more and more, um, more and more aggressive. I mean, this work is not aggressive in, in any way for me, but uh, what we consider to be beautiful is constantly being changed and challenged. And I think at, at the moment, we're in a very, in the same with the paintings, we're in a period where actually there is a lot of beauty in, in art and there isn't that quest for uh, shock and ugliness, which I really enjoy, I prefer um, this more measured approach, I suppose. Um